Okay, chapter 10, networking types, devices, and cabling. In this chapter, we're looking specifically at the different types of uh, networks, their topologies, the hardware that we're going to be using to build a LAN, and how to troubleshoot and set up and wire a small network. So, are there different types of networks? Sure, there are different sizes depending on your need. You may have a personal area network. It could be like your phone and your Bluetooth, your phone and your car's Bluetooth. It's going to be more of a personal or small area. You have a, a LAN, a local area network. That's going to be more of a smaller area, maybe like a building, maybe a classroom, maybe a group of classrooms, things of that nature. We can have a wireless LAN, a WLAN. That's going to be a LAN that's wireless. We could have a metropolitan area network or a MAN. That's going to be larger than a LAN. It's going to be more like a city-wide LAN. We call them MANs. And then lastly, we have a wide area network. That's going to be a very large area. And that's normally going to be multiple LANs. And its geographical area is going to be very large. This is by no means a detailed list. This is just a very small list of possible types of topologies. So the different types uh, of wiring that we could do, they could be a mesh network. That means each device, each node, is responsible for sending and receiving to any other node. There is no centralized point here. It's just everyone is connects to everyone else. We have a ring that's basically a giant circle. We take turns. We have a bus, which is a sequential line. And we have a star. Very common ones are going to be a, t a combination between a star and a mesh. But here we have the different types. We have star being E. We have a bus being D. We have a circle being C. And we have Mesh is being both A and B. A is a partial mesh, and B is a full mesh. So now that we have a basic understanding of the way different networks are laid out, let's talk about technologies used for internet connectivity. So we may have to connect our LAN, our home network, to uh, an ISP whether it be through a cable modem, whether it be through a DSL modem, one way or another, we have to connect our network to another network so that we can go to the internet. And normally how that's done is through a router. Uh, that's a layer three networking device that actually allows for communication between one network and a different network. Uh, we will use a router that will still be the same cable type and everything, that will be hooked up to a modem. Whether that be a cable modem or a DSL modem will be dependent on your ISP. If you have DSL, you'll have a DSL modem. The Ethernet cable will go to a twisted pair for your phone company. If you have a cable modem, your Ethernet cable will go to that modem and from that modem will uh, change to coax. So it kind of depends. So before we can go further uh, past this, we need to discuss very specifically uh, how do we measure transfer of data. So we have three major types. Latency, which is delay, which that's not really important when it comes to discussing bandwidth or discussing the communication of data. Latency is just delay in transmission. Bandwidth is the th uh, theoretical maximum data transmission rate, meaning what is the most I can send? Throughput is the actual transmission speed. See, bandwidth, we may be able to keep, we may be able to go 300 megs a second for five seconds, but after that, it tapers off to 100 megs. Well, the data throughput is going to be the actual speed over a given time. Bandwidth will just be the maximum transmission rate. So they're not always the same. Cable modem, it will use an existing coax line in your house. It uses coax, which is the same cable that TV and some people's phone comes in on. 
and it goes to a cable modem. That modem is what actually separates out the frequencies on the coax so that we could have an Ethernet cable, and that Ethernet cable will allow us to communicate with our LAN through that modem back to the cable company on the appropriate frequencies, thus giving us internet access. DSL is a digital subscriber line, pretty similar to DS to broadband, but here they're using the traditional phone lines that are used for voice. So again, similar to coax except here, the media leaving the house is gonna be phone lines instead of coax. Both can be purchased. Both can use a sliding scale. Both can use existing wiring of the structure, whether it be coax, whether it be twisted pair. Both are pretty easy to set up and both are competitive in pricing. And in most areas, both are offered. We also have things like satellite, which we will communicate with a satellite through a dish satellite at our property, and that will go to outer space, and it will bounce that signal back to a satellite ISP. That satellite ISP will then transmit it to the internet. Here, we end up with a lot slower connectivity, slower speeds, meaning latency will be increased. But the benefit is it's available everywhere, including on an airplane. We also have different types of fiber options. We have dedicated fiber, so we could have fiber between two locations, like me and building B. And that won't be internet, that will just be a point-to-point -point dedicated fiber connection. No line sharing, meaning it's just me. We get to use fiber, and we can put whatever we want through the fiber. Though, we also have other types of fiber to the home, fiber to the curb, fiber to the uh, community, fiber to blank. And that's a big uh, growing technology right now is fiber to the blank. Blank being different things. We have other technologies such as the Verizon technology, uh, FISO. Uh, that's similar to the AT&T Uverse. It's fiber to the home, but it's not all the way to the home. It's fiber to the community junction box, and it will be coax from the junction box back to your property. Here, upstream and downstream speeds can vary, and the price changes depending on what you want. We have WiMAX, which is different from Wi-Fi. WiMAX actually uses the analog TV that uh, we used to have, and that will be called WiMAX or the 802.16 wireless standard. It supports bandwidth of 75 megabits per second, and it can go several miles. Other versions of WiMAX have been released to get the speeds up to a gigabit, and again, also for cellular, but here we're looking at not so far away, like we're talking within a few miles as opposed to several miles. A lot of laptops had WiMAX built in and some laptops are having 4G network, uh, so a cellular card is being built in. Because that's the next thing is we can have a cellular WAN. As it's growing in popularity, tablets that have a cellular wireless card in them are grow growing. That way you can have your devices connect directly to the cellular network just like a phone would. The current one is 4G or LTE and that's going to be a fast speed for cellular data. We can do a connectivity on a laptop several different ways. We could have a hard wire we could have it tethered to a phone. We could have it uh, a hotspot. We could have a, a WiMAX card connecting to it. So let's talk about some networking devices. We need to understand what devices are, what end nodes are. We need to understand what hubs are, what switches are, what bridges are, 
common cable types and other devices, as well as other networking devices. Surprisingly, they did not list a router, even though we should need to understand what a router does, more than a hub at least. So we're gonna get into those devices. So let's talk about a network adapter. In order for us to get access to a network, we have to have some type of interface card that allows us to connect to that network. We call them network interface cards or NICs. Like if we wanna to connect to a wireless network, we have to have a wireless NIC. If we wanna to connect to a WiMAX card or a WiMAX network, we have to have a WiMAX network card. If we wanna to connect to the cellular network, we have to have a cellular NIC and so forth and so forth. So when we're looking at buying an adapter, we have to look at how the adapter will interface with our device. If we're looking at a laptop, do we have the open slots if it was a PCI MCA card? If uh, we don't, then maybe we have to look at getting a wireless NIC, or maybe we have to talk about getting a, a USB NIC that gives us a hardwired connection. What about the speed? What about other features on the device? Also, if we are looking at particular network cards, if they're going in a mobile device, maybe we want to talk about if they're power efficient. Do they have the ability to turn on uh, certain features based off of our needs? Other features, maybe quality of service and or maybe we need them to provide power over ethernet. That might be an option. Quality of service just guarantees we can prioritize, prioritize traffic based off of our needs. Power over ethernet, it will actually be power that the device will send over the ethernet cable. Other items might be a traditional phone setup, a dial-up modem. That's gonna be using a plain old telephone system, a POTS system. Uh, interesting thing here is they're less expensive, they're slow. You can be mobile with them. And they use twisted pair. This is an old dying technology, but still does exist sometimes. We have hubs and switches. Switches are a smart hub a hub is a dumb switch. Basically, it allows us to have a centralized connected device and the device handles communication to all nodes plugged into it. Here we have a picture of a hub slash switch. Everything plugs into the hub or switch and that device manages communication between everything. We have a wireless access point and wireless bridge. They can also double kind of like a router, but they're not really a router, but they allow us a connection point for wireless signals. So in order to have our wireless connect to our wired LAN, we'll have a wired access point that will allow wireless signals to be received from it. And a bridge is gonna be what bridges different LANs. So that's gonna be more what's gonna be more like a router. It allows us to connect one LAN to another. A router, that's what router's primary job, is actually communicating between one network and another. It does path selection. Other devices could be things like a, a NAS or a SAN, storage on the network. It could also be things like VoIP, voice over IP, so where we're sending voice and or video over the network. So types of cables used, the big ones are twisted pair, coax, and fiber optic. Coax is still used for like cameras and TV, things like that. Not really used in communication like networking anymore, but they used to exist. We have fiber optic, which will use pulses of light, not electricity. Comes in two major modes, single mode and multi-mode. It has fast bandwidth and can travel great distances. All right, going back to twisted pair, we have very, several different types of twisted pair. 
The two common types will fall under either unshielded or shielded twisted pair, meaning that pairs of cables will have either be shielded or unshielded. Unshielded is the most common and is the cheapest. They're rated by category, Cat5, Cat5e, Cat6, Cat6a, Cat7, so forth. Depending on their cat rating is how many twists they have, how many pairs they have. Like Cat3 is commonly used for phone. You can't use Cat3 to pass data through it. It doesn't like it. All of the different categories typically consist of four twisted pairs of wires, meaning there is eight total. Here we have an example of the original coax used for networking and fiber. In the middle we have our ethernet cable or shielded twisted pair or unshielded twisted pair. It's hard to tell from the photos. Here we have are different forms of Ethernet cables on top and their twists and how they're twisted. We have coax and how they're constructed. We have the connectors for a coax cable, which is typically either a BNC, which is more like the twist connector in the middle, and or an F connector. An F connector is what traditional coax uses for TV. We have several different types of fiber connections. We have an ST, which is a, a twist. We have an SC, standard connector, which is more of a square. We have a, a LC, a local connector. And we have a mechanical transfer RJ, or MTRJ. All of these typically come in pairs. Even though three of the photos, the ST, SC, and MTRJ only show one cable, where the LC shows two. In reality, almost all of these cables comes in pairs, one for sending, one for receiving. Ethernet cables come in different speeds. It normally is going to be 10, 100, or you have things like 100 megabit, also known as gigabits. Uh, we're finding that we have more and more connectivity use 10 gigabit. It does not just use fiber. We can do copper based uh, like cat six with 10 gigabit. And there are faster speeds, but I mean, those are getting very unique situations. So how do we set up a small network as the next major section? And we have to understand that we're going to be using computers and switches and cables and normally some type of internet access. So regarding the cables, make sure that they're kept out of the way, that they're not going to be a trip hazard, that they're not exceeding maximum length, like 100 meters. Use CAT 5E or higher. Realistically, CAT 6 is where most companies should be going now. And make sure to use current switches. Do not use hubs. You want to use switches. Make sure to place the wireless access point in a centralized location. Same thing with our modem, same thing with our router. You want to centralize everything. If you want to test the uh, cables, you can. We could be doing a loopback plug. That is going to be well where we test our network interface card to verify that it works. We can have a cable tester. It will test the cable. We can also use a network multimeter so that we can test the cable, the ports, the, uh, the adapters, things like uh, the power, uh, hopefully also the length as well, uh, depending on how good of a tester it is. We could also use a tone and probe or fox and hound. This is an analog one. I don't know why she put this photo in. For this, normally would be using a networking one or a digital fox and hound not this this is an analog one with a digital one they're very similar you'll plug one cable into the tone generator this is the tone generator this is an analog one though you'd be plugging the cable into this this will emit a tone 
you will then use the wand to go figure out where the other end is. You'll attach the tip to each individual cable, and if it is the correct cable, it will make a noise. If we're making cable, you'll probably have some type of wire stripper and a crimper. A crimper is what we're going to be using to terminate the cable. Here we have an RJ11 and an RJ45 port. You put the cable in or the tip in with the cable and you'll crimp it down. We have a punch down tool. That's for terminating cable on a punch down block or patch panel. Next we have a patch panel. This is what a patch panel looks like. On the other side is going to be where we're actually connecting the cables to. One of the last major things we have to discuss is cable types. Cable types are three major types. A rollover, which is used for programming. We have a straight through and a crossover. A crossover is going to be used between any two like devices. A computer to a computer. A switch to a switch. A router to a router. We'll use crossover. A device to a different type of device, we'll use a straight through. PC to a switch. Switch to a router. Those will use straight throughs. How do we make the cable? We make the cable using the EATS standard T568A and T568B standard. You'll notice there is a color code. If we're using the A standard, it's going to go green, white, green, orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange, white, brown, brown. If we're using the EATF 568B, we're going to go orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, white, brown, brown. So essentially, all we're doing is we're really flipping the orange and green pair depending on which standard we're using. If we're using EATF a or B. Here is the color pattern one more time. A and B. So for a straight through, we are using either A on both sides or B on both sides. If we are using a crossover, we will do A on one side, B on the other. What do the different pins do? Here is the important part. These two will transmit, both positive and negative transmit. Pins 3 and 6 will be the receiving pair, both positive and negative. If you are looking at four pins that have to be correct, we're looking at pins 1, 2, 3, and 6. They have to be correct. If we are looking at the different cables, here they are again. You should notice that 1, 2, 3, and 6 are the ones that should be communicating. Basic troubleshooting, do you have internet access? Is it the wire? And you flow through the charts. That's actually it for this chapter. I want to thank you.